Welcome to God's Seven Ministries. In this video, we will discuss the times of the Gentiles and also who are the Gentiles. Let's go to the book of Luke 21 and verse 20. And Jesus says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. In our last video, we discussed that the armies here that Christ is talking about, he is talking about Rome, pagan Rome. Verse 21 says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. 23. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For, they, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Notice Jesus Christ mentioned the Gentiles, plural, with an S. And Jesus Christ is not talking about individuals, but he is talking about nations, plural, or powers, different powers that will trodden Jerusalem or God's people on the foot. And then he says, until the times, plural, of the Gentiles, plural, be fulfilled. And this is what this lesson, this study, will be all about. And the question that needs to be asked is, what prophetic times of the Gentiles, plural, will be fulfilled that Christ mentioned? There must be a prophecy that will be fulfilled, and that will determine the end of the times of the Gentiles. Now let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 13. And the Bible says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said, Unto that certain saint, which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden on the foot? In the last video, we discussed who is the transgression of desolation, and we saw that it represents Rome, but specifically the papacy. But now we see two subjects are being mentioned here in Daniel 8.13. The daily and the transgression of desolation. Notice it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint, which spake how long duration the duration of a time how long shall be the vision concerning the daily number one and the transgression of desolation number two which is the papacy to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot so these are the gentiles that jesus christ was referring to the abomination of desolations and the daily but now we want to know who is the daily or who are the daily and we already know who is the abomination of desolation which is the papacy and what we need to do we need to go to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11 and the Bible says and from the time that the daily shall be taken away the abomination that maketh desolate, which is the papacy, set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. And when we apply the day to a year principle, it's actually twelve ninety years. So the abomination that maketh desolate here is talking about the papacy. 
the papacy is the only singular power that was set up for 1290 years but something must be taken away in order for the papacy to be set up and that thing that needs to be taken away is the daily but we want to know what is the daily to find the answer let's go to second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first this is very important and that men of sin which is the papacy be revealed the son of perdition the papacy so in order for the papacy to be revealed there must be a falling away first and Paul when he wrote this letter to the church he is basically saying that Rome pagan Rome specifically paganism needs to be falling away first in order for the men of sin to be revealed or the papacy verse 4 who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God verse 5 remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things and now ye know what withholdeth or restraint that he might be revealed in his time so pagan Rome when pagan Rome was in power pagan Rome restraineth the papacy to be revealed verse 7 for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth or restrain will let until he be taken out of the way or taken away and this is the daily that have to be taken away in order for the men of sin or the papacy or the abomination that make it desolate to be set up or revealed verse 8 and then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming so now we see those two major Gentiles power that treads God's people on the foot the papacy and the daily or paganism but specifically pagan Rome another witness to prove that the daily is paganism if we simply go to Daniel chapter 8 and if you read the whole chapter you will see that Daniel received a vision and he saw a ram that has two horns one horn is higher than the other that indicates a blemish ram and then he saw a he goat that has one horn that also indicates an unblemished or blemish rather a blemish he goat and we know that in the earthly sanctuary God requires a perfect pure unblemished ram or he goat so therefore the pagans when they sacrifice to their false gods or idols they usually sacrifice blemish creatures or sacrifice so we know that the ram and the he goat represents paganism which is media Persia and Greece and if you continue go on it will also show you pagan Rome and so forth so therefore the story of Daniel 8 is talking about paganism and papalism the abomination that make it desolate those are the subject that Daniel 8 is referring to paganism and papalism now let's go to Zechariah chapter 1 and we'll start with verse 18 to investigate those Gentiles that treads God's people on the foot verse 18 says 
Then lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What come these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horns over the land of Judah to scatter it. We see that the horns of the Gentiles or the horns that scattered or tread Jerusalem, Israel, and Judah. This is the pagan powers, the Gentiles, that did this work. Notice the next verse, which is very important, which is Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 1. I lifted up mine eyes again, and looked, and behold a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. Hmm, I wonder who is this man with this measuring line in his hand. This is key in order for us to understand the times of the Gentiles. Now let's ask John, who is this man that has the measuring line in his hand? Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Notice, John is the one that was given the measuring line for the reed to measure the temple. So Zechariah saw that man who is John. So Zechariah the prophet saw John the prophet measuring the temple of God. And the outer court was left for the Gentiles. And notice Gentiles plural with an S. And this is who Jesus Christ was referring to. The Gentiles that will tread God's people underfoot until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And that time is the 42 months. The 42 months. Notice verse 2. It says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, plural, and the holy city shall they, plural, tread underfoot, Forty and two months. Now the question is, who are the Gentiles (plural) that tread God's people underfoot for forty and two months? Number one, we know as Seventh Day Adventists, it is the papacy. But notice, it says they tread underfoot forty and two months. So who is the other Gentile? that tread God's people underfoot. Before we answer this question, let's establish that the papacy is actually one singular power that ruled the earth for 1260 years or 42 months. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. And the Bible says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time 
times in a half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Keep that in mind. Flood. After the woman in that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So we see that the serpent here is the papacy during the time times and a half of time which is the 1260 years of the rulership of the papacy singular notice it says in verse 15 that he caused her to be carried away of the flood that's a singular notice again in verse 15 where it says and the serpent cast out of his singular mouth water as a flood after the woman so we see that the papacy was a singular power we're not dealing with individuals or different popes but we're dealing with the system a singular power that ruled the earth for 1260 years now this is the interesting part we want to know who is the other Gentile we discover one who is the papacy but we want to know who is the other one the other Gentile that tread God's people underfoot for 40 and two months we know the papacy tread God's people underfoot for 42 months which is the 1260 years but who is the other Gentile that tread God's people underfoot for 42 months because we know in history there was no other power but the papacy that ruled for 42 months there was no other powers that joined with the papacy for 42 months except of course the the kings and and, and, and the rulers of the earth but that's not what we're talking about we are talking about a world power that tread God's people underfoot well the answer is in Daniel chapter 8 if you remember that there are two desolating powers we have the daily paganism and we have the abomination of desolation the papacy so those are the two Gentile powers that tread God's people underfoot if you go to Zechariah Zechariah shows you that there are four Gentiles horns that treads God's people on the foot or scatter God's people so therefore the other power that tread God's people on the foot for 42 months is the Gentiles so what we need to do we need to go back to Revelation chapter 11 and to prove that Notice in the earthly sanctuary, you have two furnitures that are in the outer court. You have the altar of burnt sacrifice, and then you have the laver. Remember that the outer court is given unto the Gentiles, paganism and papalism. Remember, Zechariah tells us that there are four horns of the Gentiles that scatter God's people. Now we're going to prove that the altar of sacrifice represents the pagans nation that trample God's people underfoot. Let's go to Exodus chapter 27 and verse 1 and 2. And the Bible says, And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, 
five cubits long and five cubits broad, and the altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Verse two, and thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. Keep that in mind. The altar is made up of brass, but the altar has four horns. Those are the horns that tread God's people underfoot. When we study the sanctuary message, we know the sanctuary represents Jesus Christ. And you can use different aspects to study the sanctuary to understand different aspects of the Christian life. But in this study, we are studying the times of the Gentiles. Because remember, the Bible says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, which is Psalm 77 verse 13. Now, what about the laver? The laver, we know that the laver is also made of brass. And within the laver, we have water. But let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 14 to see what the Bible also refers as the water that is within the laver. Verse 14 says, And he made also bases and lavers made he upon the bases. One sea, the water also represents sea, and twelve oxen under it. So Solomon, when the temple was being built, he built multiple lavers in the outer court. And within the lavers, the Bible says sea instead of water. So now the question is, what is the sea also referred as? If we go to Psalms 66, verse 6, and the Bible says, He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in Him. So we see that the Bible shows that the sea also represents flood. So Solomon, when he put the sea or the water within the laver, he also put flood within the laver, the Bible says. But now we want to find out what does the flood represent? All we have to do is go to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14 and 15. And the Bible says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, and times, and a half a time. This is the 1260 years. From the face of the serpent, or the papacy. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood, which is the power of the papacy. After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood which is the papacy so the flood that is within the laver or the water that is within the laver represents the power of the papacy so the altar of sacrifice represents paganism the four horns of paganism the gentiles and also the laver represents the papacy remember the outer court is given unto the gentiles plural, papalism and paganism. Now we see the big picture. The altar represents paganism and the laver represents the papacy and the outer court of the earthly sanctuary. But what is the significance of the brass of these two furnitures? The altar is made of brass and the laver is also made of brass. Why? Remember, keep in mind that Satan, he is counterfeiting Jesus Christ in every aspect of him. If we go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14, and this is the description of Jesus Christ. 
And the Bible says in verse 14, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, this is very important, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. The feet of Jesus Christ is made out of brass, according to Revelation chapter 1. So the devil is using the feet of brass to trample God's people under foot. So this is how he is counterfeiting Jesus Christ. He is stomping, trotting, treading God's people under foot. And this is what we are seeing here in the sanctuary and also in the prophecies of Jesus Christ, the times of the Gentiles. He is using the Gentiles as his feet, papalism and paganism. The same way Jesus Christ crushed the head of the serpent, so Satan, he wants to crush the Christian, God's people, with the brass, the feet of brass, the altar of sacrifice, paganism, and the labor of brass, papalism. This is a counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Also remember that 42 months were given unto the Gentiles, paganism and papalism, the altar and the labor. For pa paganism, it started from 723 BC all the way to 538 AD. So this is exactly 1260 years. It started with Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, and Pagan Rome. Those are the four horns that tread God's people underfoot. When you go to the papacy now, which started from 538 AD all the way to 1798 AD, the papacy was also given 42 months, 1260 years, to tread God's people underfoot. And this is how you can show when you add those two together, the 1260 with another 1260, that gives you exactly 2520 years. And this is how you can prove the 2520 in the Bible, that it is a prophetic time period. I pray that this lesson was a blessing unto you. May God be with you and keep studying on. Amen.